Hey everybody, so today I am going to show you how to make homemade liver mush. Uh, some people call it liver pudding. Uh, the recipe I have is from my great aunt's uh, recipe book. And I was actually really excited to find it because I've never thought about making it. It's something that we ate as a kid. We have a company called Nieces that's in our local area and they made a wonderful liver pudding and um, you know, just wonderful sausage. They're like the best in the area. And we grew up eating liver pudding and it came in a block and as a kid, I didn't really know what it was, but um, we would fry it. Like the way I liked it was, you know, you slice it off and you fry it really good. And so it's kind of melty on the inside and crispy on the outside like sausage. And you'd put it with like fried egg or you would put it on saltine crackers with mustard. That was one of the only two ways I would eat it. But my family loved it. Well, we stopped kind of eating pork for the most part. We still eat bacon now and then. Um, though my mother does not eat any of it because she has uh, psoriatic arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis and pork really messes with her joints and her uh, psoriatic arthritis. And then I tested positive for rheumatoid arthritis. I had the markers, but it was not active. And so I just kind of weaned off of pork products as well except for bacon. And then when I got COVID, um, it actually activated my rheumatoid arthritis. So now I, I don't have it really bad, but I have a lot of pain in my fingers sometimes. And I do have pain in my joints, especially when I eat certain things and pork is a trigger. So we have not eaten liver pudding in years. And so, um, cause it, you know, it's a pork product. Well, this recipe said you could make uh, liver mush from any liver, but pork was the best. Well, I have a lot of beef liver. Um, I also have chicken liver, but um, we have a lot of beef liver because the cow livers are huge and I don't like to waste anything. So when we took our cow to the abattoir and had it processed, I said, I want the liver I want the heart, I want the tongue, I want the bones, the soup bones and the, you know, rib meat so that I could utilize as much as I could. The only thing I did not get was the lard and, um, and the leaf lard. And I regret doing that, but I didn't think about it when I was filling out my order because it's not something I've ever ordered before and I've never gotten the tongue and stuff before. So, um, I called them and said, Hey, I want that, but they had already started processing so I couldn't I couldn't get that but anyway so I decided to give this a try and I knew going into this that I probably would not eat it but I figured I could you know at least taste it and the funny thing is is I tried to taste it and I put it like just up to my mouth and mm -mm, no couldn't do it because the process of making this actually turned me off of it completely. So I'm going to leave the uh, commentary in that I may, I filmed this with the intent of it being a voiceover. And so I will do voiceover for the process, but I'm going to leave the background in because you can hear me like, I mean, it's kind of funny because I'm just like, oh my God, this is so gross. This is, this is gagging me. And, um, <laughs> so I am not a fan. I will be perfectly honest. However, um, I did at the very end, I forgot to film, um, me putting it in the loaf pan, but I do show a picture of it in the loaf pan. I just put parchment paper in it and put, put it in the loaf pan. And that's kind of the end of the film. I did give some to my neighbor and she loves liver and kidney and heart and stuff like that. And she said it was fantastic. And I've given some to another neighbor who wanted it. And I have not heard what she said yet. Um, but my daughter actually likes it. Uh, she was able to eat it. And no one else in the house was willing to try it. Like I said, I put it up to my mouth and I like, I put it on my tongue and I was like, no, mm -mm, it's not happening. 
And the rest I'm going to give to my mom and dad because they are excited about getting it. But I have not seen them because my mom has COVID. Well, she's recovering from COVID. Um, I think this is like her third or fourth time with it. So anyway, um, I will, it keeps for a couple weeks in the refrigerator. I don't know if you can freeze it, but I don't see why you couldn't refreeze it uh, because it's cooked at that point. So you're not refreezing raw. Anyway, so I'm going to start this video and you can see the process of making it and hear um, my commentary as I tell you um, the process and it's super easy. The recipe is super easy. So, and I will put that in the description box. So enjoy this video. It's not for everyone, just a warning. We'll see you on the next one. Okay, so we are starting the actual process of making the liver mush and the first thing you want to do is to boil your liver in about a quart of water what you're going to want at the end is a quart of water per about one pound of liver so i actually did two pounds of liver and so I wanted uh, about two quarts of water. And I was a little short because some of your water will cook out. But the liver will also release uh, juice and everything. So I was a little short. So I just I went ahead and added a little water back to it uh, when I needed to use the juice. And it was fine. So once you have it cooked, you are at the process where I am now. And that is getting the liver pieces out and putting them in the food processor. And this is actually what turned my stomach oh God, was so the food processor um, because denaturing the texture I of the liver, liver because the it just, it, the smell wasn't so bad for me. It was just the, the, smell, the texture the and the, the look. It, it, I mean, it Everything looks like cat food. Jesus. That's so gross. Oh. oh my God. Okay, and here I am measuring out the liquid that I need. And I added some water to it, and I'm putting it back in the pot to heat it up. So once you've got it hot, that's when you are going to add your seasonings and your cornmeal. So the seasonings that you're going to add is sage, and it's one teaspoon of sage per pound of liver. Now, I messed up here, and I did one tablespoon of sage per pound of liver so I had two tablespoons of sage and everybody liked it so I I don't think you can go wrong with doing that so that will be your choice I, I'll write it up as my recipe or as I made it because everyone enjoyed it so one tablespoon of sage per pound a half teaspoon of salt per pound so I used one whole teaspoon of salt and a half Oops. teaspoon of paprika per pound and I used one teaspoon of smoked paprika and then um, it's a half a cup of cornmeal per pound so I used um, a whole cup eight ounces of cornmeal for the two quarts of liquid and then you're going to simmer that until thick and then add the liver back to it so it takes about five minutes of cooking and then you will cool it and form it into a loaf which i just put mine in a loaf pan and that was it so here you go
may officially be the most disgusting thing I've ever done in my life. And I will probably never, ever make it again. Or they heat it up and put it with eggs or they fry it and smear it on crackers with mustard. I used to like it when I was a kid, but now that I'm making it, I will never touch it again. No, it looks like dog food and it smells like it too. Okay, it might look a little like poop too. You know what it really kind of looks like? Poop. Hang on, I'm thinking of it. Uh, cat wet food. Yes, it, yes. Like mashed up cat wet food. Wet cat food, yes. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Does it not? No. Eat it. 